So, here we go. Uh, we're starting to record a little bit of Paramir sensor data between the Garmin and uh, Wahoo. Uh, Wahoo is going to be connected to the Trans E from Giant 2019 model. And this is the 2020 upgrade of the Ride Control 1. And Garmin is going to be connected to those P1 Paramir pedals that we have down here. You can see them. Yes, we're gonna be plugging in road shoes to an electric mountain bike. <clears throat> that should work. So here we go. Uh, sensors: we got heart rate and e-bike connected, and a speed sensor too. Okay. So here we go. Let's start all the rides. Gonna start the ride simultaneously on all devices and start in off mode just to have a reference point. How much watt am I cranking up without any support whatsoever? So you got 360 watts of. Okay, 475 watts in Garmin. So I'm about 200 watts in the Wahoo right now. Okay. As you can see, at around 100 watts, we get almost nothing on the e-bike. Let's put it in eco mode and see how it goes. Eco mode is set up for 50%. Two hundred fifty watts on Garmin, one hundred twenty-five on Wahoo. Would be better. Basically, it looks like it's giving me the half readout.
yeah, it's always showing about half. Okay, now let's switch to second mode, which is basic. It's set at 125%. Putting out 350 watts. We see 200 on the Wahoo. Three hundred Garmin, around hundred. Let's see. Huh. I'm chasing some gear. Five hundred watts on Garmin, around two hundred twenty on Wahoo. Okay. Could be better. We're climbing up some really nice climbs here in Oslo. Good gradients. Beautiful scenery too. Great place to live. Okay, since we get a little tired, Let's switch up to 200% in normal mode. By the way, the bottles I'm using is from Fidlock. It's a pretty good system, since I don't have a bottle cage on this bike. You don't want the downhills, right? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be climbing up Holman Cone here. This is a pretty cool ski jump. How are we doing on this 200%? Got about 190 power on Garmin. 107, okay. Started getting even here. Interesting. Okay, so we're at 200%. So if we're maxing it out at 250 watts, 
We're doing 300. Theoretically, he can give us more. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful sunset. Really good colors. So at 150 watts on Garmin, he's showing me just about 70, 90. Okay, now it got up a little bit, but then down again. It's really not stable. I'm holding a pretty steady pace here at around 200. Okay, now wow, he showed me 200 too. It's a little bit bumpy. Good question if we're gonna see it later on some GPS, GPX comparison tools. This doesn't feel like 80 watts, Wahoo. Sorry. It's not Wahoo problem, it's the Giants reporting. Okay, 270 on Garmin, 140 on Wahoo. Okay. The interesting part is gonna be the average, right? See if the average on the whole ride will gonna be similar. Pretty much half the way to the top. Also the calorie output is gonna be interesting to see. We got the same heart rate data. Pretty much the same cadence. And two different parameters. It's gonna be really interesting to see what does he think I'm burning right here. Hold the side of diesel. Oh no, this looks like a diesel. It is a diesel. Always hope it's just gonna be electric. Okay. Really does feel like cheating. Oh, 
Well, you're using the power, but it's just we're faster and have better cooling, right? So it's not such a torture as when you're going 10 kilometers per hour on a 15% gradient, right? So it's cheating as the climb is basically just shorter. So you're going faster, right? You do less of their powerful tire strokes because of the help. But if you do the same amount of calories, it doesn't matter, right? So maybe you have to do it twice to burn the exact same amount of calories. For example, But we will see after the test, right? We'll see what giant reports and what actually happens from the power meter. Okay, getting close to the all and cone ski jump. Ooh, look at that. Somebody's taking photos. Nice background. Zip line for summer. Go and have some fun. Usually amping up the support to 360% doesn't make much sense when you're doing 200 already. Motor max out in 250, so it's not much use to amp it up to 360, right? Should be actually enough to go 125. But it's easier to calculate half of 200% if that has some relevance, right? If cadence about 90, it seems pretty optimal to me. Going over 200 in power meter. For some reason, Giant shows about 80. I don't think so. Feels like 200. It's really great on e-bikes that you're not overheating even on a steep climb. Such a huge difference between cooling at 25 kilometers per hour and 12. Okay, maybe 14, but still huge difference. For somebody who's wondering if I'm gonna upload it to Strava, Probably yes, but as an e-bike, right? So, I'm not gonna be killing anybody's KOMs, although I'm pretty sure there's people who ride faster on a race bike than I'm doing right now. There's some really powerful people here.
might be wondering why those tires are making so much noise. Well, they're three inch tires set up in tubeless. So they are pretty loud. Also one of the reasons why I'm using three inch tires is I really want some extra grip on high speed gravel downhills. There's a lot of these kind of terrain here. And when you pump them a little bit below 20 PSI, you get absolutely great grip. The only problem is this bike doesn't officially support it. So you can't get this 41 tooth ring in the back end because you're starting rubbing against the tire. A little bit dangerous if you think about it, but I'm taking the risk myself. Okay, getting closer to Trivon Torna, which is the top of the ski center down in Oslo. Great view, worth the climb. On a normal road bike, I would be definitely more tired at this point. But my legs can really feel it. It's not like I'm not getting any exercise. Heart rate is 165, so definitely shows that it's not a casual climb. I might be above 170 on a road bike. Not that fit. Okay, cherry on the pie. Getting those beautiful views. We're getting at 100 RPMs cadence. The motor still keeps up. I think it can go up to 120, which is amazing. That's 71% battery. So use up 30% battery on this climb. Getting mostly on 200%. Hard rate got up to 170 on this high cadence. Makes sense. Got in time for the sense. That's beautiful. Last climb. Or it's two months torna. Here's the ski center for kids.
Okay, somebody got the good spot. I can just see them. This is the 2019 Giant Trans E Plus. You're running it on three inch specialized tubeless tires with a pro core setup. So you have a additional protection inside of the tire. So in case we have a burp, which we shouldn't have actually, this should protect the tire setup. Here are the power meter P1 power tap power pedals that I'm using today to measure our efficiency and power output compared to the Sync Drive Pro motor. Okay, so this is the Ride Control 1 uh, 2020 edition that I have used to transmit all the data to the uh, Wahoo element. And here we have the Garmin smartwatch, uh, the 735 XT, which is connected to the PowerTap P1's power meters. Here we see the same statistic, the three second average power as well as here. Okay, now it's time for a little summary after the ride. Uh, here we got the data from the PowerTap P1 in blue. You can see the average was 200, and now we see the data in green from Ride Control plus Wahoo. Uh, the average is significantly lower, 113 watts. Um, here we got the cadence data, which is pretty consistent between two devices. Average 84.5, and on the Ride Control Plus Wahoo, the average is 83.9. Not big difference. So the only real difference in power data. Um, elevations pretty consistent uh, throughout the whole recording, all 25 minutes. And here we got some screenshots from Strava. Uh, we can see the power averages, also 200 for the power taps, and uh, 111 for from the ride control on Trans E plus Wahoo. So it's a significant difference. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more content.